Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Subject, email isn't working. I'm going to be sleeping on the couch for a week. Tech support in 2018. My router doesn't have an SSID. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Subject, email isn't working. As the only system administrator for a small programming firm, I usually have to deal with rather stupid requests and issues. We also still use Exchange 2010 and are in the process of migrating since I took over. However, everyone has been a bit hesitant to move since they don't like the look of Outlook 2016. One morning I walk in and everything is business as usual, but I receive a Gmail notification with the subject line in all caps email isn't working. As I begin walking to my office the VP of sales frantically signals for my attention, and knowing her habits as a user, I grimace and brace myself for her usual ineptitude. She immediately starts yelling at me. VP, the email server is down. I just sent you an email to let you know about it. I can't do any of my work without email. This is so frustrating that you guys don't react immediately to this. At my last company, those IT guys knew when the servers went down before anyone else noticed. Me, you sent me an email telling me the email server is down from your company mail account? VP, yes of course I did, how else could I tell you guys it isn't working? Why don't you take these things seriously, she states while rolling her eyes and throwing her hands in the air for added effect. At this point I can feel my frustration in my face and try to compose myself. Me, you sent the email to my personal account. I received your email. Are you seeing any errors when sending emails? VP, just fix the damn email server. At this point I was speaking through clenched teeth and typed out a quick test email on my company account to send to her. Me, VP, I understand your frustration. But I can't fix a problem that doesn't exist. I just sent you an email on my company account. Did you receive it? VP, of course it works if you send it, you're the it guy. I'm going to call the CIO about this. I decided to just saunter over to my office and await the confused and frantic call of my CIO. Instead I receive an email from him stating, don't worry. I know it's working. Just ignore her, she blew a huge deal because she forgot to send an email and wanted to blame it on IT. I checked the mail server and didn't see anything stuck in the outbox. We're all clear. As I slowly chuckle to myself, she bursts into my office, which also happens to be the server room. VP, you need to set me up with webmail. Me, you're already set up with webmail. Everyone is. I've already sent out several email with instructions on how to access it. You literally replied back to me telling me you refused to use it because you didn't like how it looked. VP, well I want access again in case the server goes down again and email doesn't work. Me, if the mail server goes down and email doesn't work, webmail won't work. It's the same thing. We're in the process of moving to a hybrid solution to prepare for situations like that, but for right now there's nothing we can do other than troubleshoot the issues that arise. VP, then why does my Gmail and Yahoo Mail work? You don't know what you're talking about. Me, we don't have a Gmail or Yahoo Mail server. We don't even manage those. That's completely different from our email. VP, I'm going to tell CIO that it is unable to help me. After she storms out, I go about my day, letting the soothing white noise of server fans and constant AC relax me. At the end of the day I receive a text from the CIO. It turns out she had sent too many emails to a potential client and had gotten blocked, but chose to delete the error messages she was receiving because she thought it was spam. Unfortunately this was normal behavior, and since she is close to the CEO, I still have to deal with her on occasion. I'm going to be sleeping on the couch for a week. 
In one of my first tech support jobs, I provided tier 2 wireless support for a large Pennsylvania-based ISP. I didn't actually work for the ISP, I worked for a now-defunct company that provided support agents to their tenants. In this role I took escalated calls from customers who paid monthly for additional wireless support from their ISP. My shift was from 5 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. Central, which meant I got the bizarre calls from all over, but mostly Central Time, Mountain Time, and Pacific Time Zones. Warning, the following story is dialogue heavy. Dollar me, myself. Dollar CX, customer, an older African-American asterisk gentleman from just outside of Seattle, Washington. Asterisk note, this detail is included because his delivery of certain lines is reminiscent of a well-practiced comic, and I felt that a retelling would be incomplete without that component. Dollar me, thank you for calling Dollar ISP, my name is Conspicuous Earn, how can I help you today? Insert account verification, etc. Dollar CX, uh, yeah, I need help with my phone internet. Dollar me, absolutely, I can assist with getting your phone connected to your in-home wireless internet from Dollar CX. What seems to be the issue? Dollar CX, so here's what's happening, I work security for a building at night, and I like to watch movies on my phone. I can usually watch a couple of movies on my shift, but I've usually got part of a movie left over at the end of a night. Dollar me, trying to figure out where this is going, so you would like assistance connecting to your work's wireless internet? Dollar CX, no, no, their tech guy got me set up on their internet. Work is fine. Thing is, I come home after my shift and watch the end of my movies, but Dollar Cell Company keeps charging me for all the data and my wife is starting to get mad. Dollar me, I think I understand. I can certainly help you dash. The customer interrupts me. Not in a rude way at all I think he was just nervous about his next question. Dollar CX, yeah, I was gonna ask if there was some way to get my dollar ISP internet stuff on my phone. He dropped this last part like it was a bombshell like I was going to go back to my tech support colleagues and mock him relentlessly for even asking such a question. Dollar me, certainly. I can see right here that you have our dollar wireless gateway garbage that is currently configured with the default wireless settings, so I should be able to get you connected right away. Dollar CX, on my internet in my apartment? Dollar me, yes sir, on your dollar ISP wireless network. The customer just starts chuckling at this point. Dollar CX, you married? Dollar me, uh no. I do have a significant other. Dollar CX, okay, so you know when they think you're wrong and you're arguing with them, and then there's that moment where they realize that you're right? Dollar me, sure, yeah. Dollar CX, you know that moment when they realize that they're wrong and they know that you know that they're wrong? It only lasts for one second before they're all mad that you were right, and then you end up in the doghouse over being right. Dollar me. Dollar CX, my wife has been telling me for weeks that I'm dumb as hell for thinking I can get our internet on my phone. When I tell her, he's cracking up at this point, that she was wrong, that the internet guy told me I can get it on my phone, the look in her eyes, man. I'm going to be sleeping on the couch for a week over this dollar hashtag, plus, and it's gonna be worth it. I got him connected to his home network, and we ended the call in short order, but I don't think I'll ever forget his description of that moment. Tech support in 2018. This gem of a story happened this morning, and I never thought I'd come across this situation. Critical Ticket comes into our team queue this morning for an issue with a timesheet report. The thing is, this particular report is run from a reporting system which my team can't access or do anything about. We get lots of these, so the process is pretty much to call the user, get the report specifics, and tell them that I'm forwarding the ticket to the appropriate group. Dollar me, hi dollar user, could you tell me how you're getting to this report so that I can get some specifics about it? Dollar user, well it's on my computer and I go into the blue EI roll. Dollar me, okay, no problem. Let's make this easier. 
Could you open the report and copy paste the URL to me in our Skype message? Dollar user, I don't know how to do that. Dollar me, I can walk you through it, could you open the report? Dollar user, no, I don't know how to copy paste. At this point, I realize I just need to remote in and open the report myself. Dollar me, alright I'm going to set up a remote session quick. One moment. Dollar user, no, I don't know how to copy paste. Dollar me. I'll teach you how when I get remote in. I browse to the report and I see the print screen menu flash quickly and the print button clicked. Dollar me, did you just print that? Dollar user, yes, I need to remember all the steps you're doing. Dollar me, just hang tight and I'll teach you how to copy and paste. You won't need to print any more for that. Dollar user, okay. Each step of the way to get the info from this report, the user hits print screen and clicks the print button. I'm mad about how much ink that requires, but hey, it's their ink I guess. I finally get the info I need, update the ticket, and start on showing her how to copy paste. Dollar me, it's as simple as that. Right click and copy the thing you want, and right click paste it into OneNote. Dollar user, oh my goodness. That's amazing. This is going to make my job so much easier. Dollar me, yep, it sure will. Dollar user, no you don't understand. I spent so much time printing out my reports, cutting them and rubber cementing them onto a page to fax them to myself. There are times that people have been waiting on me just because it takes so long to put it together. Thank you so much for showing me this. No. Way. I helped a user that was literally making physical copies of documents, cutting out the contents she wanted with scissors, and pasting it onto another sheet of paper, only to be faxed to herself to save on her machine. I checked my watch to look at the date to make sure I didn't fall into some time warp to the past. How many days years has this been going on for? My router doesn't have an SSID. For context, I work for a cable company. I did field install and repair for years, but have since been promoted to plant maintenance. I had just parked my truck on the side of the road and was getting ready to boom up for some work when a customer approached me. Me, hi there. How can I help you sir? Customer, hi. I just had my equipment installed yesterday, but my router doesn't have an SSID, so I can't connect to Wi-Fi. Me, that's odd. All of our routers have an SSID built in by default. Did you check the sticker on the back? Or do you mean it isn't broadcasting? Customer, yeah, it's the weirdest thing, I can't find any networks nearby. There are serial numbers and a MAC address on the sticker, but no SSID. Me, well, that sounds like what you've got is actually just a modem. I start to explain to him that it takes two devices to make Wi-Fi internet work, a modem and a router, but he cuts me off mid-sentence. Customer, no no, it's a combo unit. Me, combo units have the SSID on a sticker on the back. Customer, well, this one doesn't. Me, well, then isn't a combo unit. It sounds like what you have is just a modem. Customer, no, it's a combo unit. Sigh. Me, well, I have some work to do here so I will be around for a little bit. If you want to bring it out I will have a look and confirm for you what kind of device it is, but it does not sound like you have a router. The customer looked visibly frustrated with me at this point, probably because he felt like I wasn't listening to his problem. But the problem was pretty darn obvious to me. I started putting on my harness and putting down my wool chocks. The customer scurried off down the road, mumbling and kicking at the gravel. About 15 minutes later he pulls up in a truck, gets out, walks right into my coned-off safety area and stands right beneath my bucket while I'm in the air. I tell him he needs to move outside of my cones and ask if he needs me to move my truck so he can get by. Customer no, I just brought my truck so when we're done talking I can go and replace this defective router unit.
He then holds the device up in the air above his head, resembling Link having just discovered the Master Sword. Guess what kind of device it is? It's a standard issue modem.